Hello and welcome. My name is Gordon De Silva and I am the MD of Gordon's Nights. We're a multi-award winning uh, firm of chartered accountants. Uh, won the British Accountancy Awards 2014 and 15. And uh, this is a briefing on property planning. The This uh, is for people who've got a property portfolio and are concerned about the tax rises that are coming down the line from uh, Her Majesty's government and the Inland Revenue. We seem to be on a train that's going to higher taxes for small businesses and uh, private landlords. Um, and that, that seems to be a trend. And as far as I can tell, because it's coming from this government, it's only going to get worse, regardless of which government is in power. Uh, the state the country is in, our taxes are going to go up. So uh, this is why I'm bringing forward this property planning briefing. Part of the reason I'm bringing the briefing is uh, we charge for our time and our fees are great value. However, uh, you know, there is certain things that are applicable to all people. So you can either qualify yourself in or qualify yourself out. And as a result, uh, you, you will save a whole lot of money paying me to give you this advice one-to-one. -one. So I always ask my clients to first watch the briefing, uh, schedule some questions, identify if they want to do business with us based on what I've said. Some, some of the uh, clients will just say, this is not for me for, for obvious reasons in a minute. Uh, others will say, yes, it's worth paying the fee to have a chat. So um, let's get started. Uh, the background for this is that, you know, we, we are living in rapidly changing times. Tax is going up and up and up, and uh, private landlords have been targeted uh, in the, this year and can the coming years, and that target is going to get worse and worse and worse, in my opinion. We're targeting interest rate disallowance. They're targeting wear and tear allowances. They're targeting, uh, you know, uh, uh, stamp duty. So the, the, we're coming from multiple directions and all of them are aimed at hurting the landlord's pocket, uh, which is, you know, in a way I can understand it from a, from a country point of view, you know, uh, so, but the, the, even though I'm going to get hurt by it, my clients are going to get hurt by it. I still can not see the, the merit in what the chancellor is doing, but all I'm saying is taxes are going up. We need to protect ourselves. So what's the problem? Uh, the problem here is we got uh, clients who are sitting on a portfolio uh, of properties they've bought in the past, and that portfolio has increased in value significantly. Uh, through that increase, uh, they are now sitting on a potential, we, we call it pregnant with capital gains. This is where the underlying investment has gone up. And so if you sell it, you're going to have to pay a lot of capital gains. And uh, you may even have to pay stamp duty and bank charges and all the and, you know, refinancing charges and stuff. So that's the problem we're in right now. We've, we're sitting on this tax problem. And of course, uh, when we pass our estate on to the next generation, there is a position of uh, inheritance tax, isn't there? So we've got to look at all of these things and we've got to be mindful of all of these issues as problems. And of course, now that the Inland Revenue have changed their rules on uh, what's going to be allowable for tax, taking away mortgage interest over time, uh, we know that our tax bills are going to go up significantly. So we've got to be you know, mindful of that too. So uh, the risk, now in every piece of planning, there are risks, okay? If anyone tells you there are no risks, uh, I would suggest that they're lying to you. If they're going to save you a significant amount of tax, I would say there's a 99.9% .9 chance there is going to be risk. Now, whether the risk is low or high will depend on the type of planning and how much tax is going to be saved, but there will be risks. And if you ignore those risks, uh, you are liable to get caught out and it'll all end in tears. And so the first thing I'm going to be doing on this thing is really trying to put you off. And so if you're not akin to risk, then this planning is unlikely to work for you. So you might as well stop listening now uh, because, you know, there are ways of minimizing the risk, but it has risk. Regardless of how we can minimize it, there will always be risk when you're saving significant amounts of tax. Uh, just re in the recent budget, 2016 in March, the government took a, took a piece of legislation that was 
uh, enacted um, sort of seven years ago and brought it to bear on things that happened 10 years ago when the law didn't exist. Now, that is called retrospective legislation. And we always thought that that was not the dumb thing. It wasn't, it wasn't playing cricket as, uh, as uh, you know, the colloquial goes. And it doesn't seem fair, does it? You know, you, it's like driving down the road uh, and you've got a 30 mile an hour speed limit. So you drive at 29 miles an hour and then uh, three years later, they go, well, actually, we changed the speed limit on that road today. But because we caught you on camera three years ago driving 29, you've, you've exceeded the speed limit, we're going to fine you. That's the environment we're in. I, I, I don't, I'm not over-egging it. It is actually true. And you're well-versed to take that, bear that in mind when you take on any planning. So whenever you take on planning with me or with anyone else, please bear that in mind. We make a big thing of risk because it is so critical that you understand it because you, know, you can do the planning and you can spend a lot of money uh, doing the planning to save a load of money, but it could, and, and I, I say it could, end in tears, okay? So you've just got to bear that in mind. Are you willing to take any risk at all? If you're not willing to take any risk at all, then we've got to do things the simple way, pay our taxes and be and go away with a smile. So let's let's carry on. Uh, I'm assuming if you're still with me, you, you, you understand there is going to be some risk if we're going to save a lot of tax, okay? Um, we need to qualify the people who are going to take on this thing. So let's look at the qualification uh, system. We're, you're going to have to have uh, significant numbers of properties. You know, you're going to have to have certainly over over five and probably over ten pro residential properties. So keep that in mind because uh, if you don't fit that criteria, the risk has just gone up. Now, the reason I say five and ten is because there are some portfolios that may have, um, uh, you know, different different uh, management potential. So, for example, if you manage student properties, and I and I have a couple of student properties, uh, the management of those are much harder than the management of long-term, you know, family rentals. And so, you know, there is that. Okay, so you're going to begin to see this, the, how much management time do you spend managing these properties will determine how easily the, the, the risk factors can be brought down to implement the planning we are thinking of. And uh, we also, yeah, so we talk about you know, how much, so how many in your portfolio and how heavily are they managed. If you're not managed at all, you know, if you've got you know, one or two properties and you, don't, you hardly spend any time managing them, then uh, it's going to be pretty pretty poor. Uh, chance of getting this through if you spend a lot of time managing them you know better better chance right and lower risk and um, then ownership you know so uh, who owns the properties is it just you is it you and a spouse is it you and a partner uh, we've got clients who own it with brothers sisters uh, mothers fathers wives uh, partners uh, cousins uh, friends you know we've got a whole range of clients who have property in different ownership styles. How do you own it? Because if you own it as an individual, it's, uh, the planning is going to be more risky uh, and may take longer if you apply it, uh, if you want to keep it safer. And if you um, own it as a partnership and have done for, for a while, then the, the risk comes down and the potential goes up. So you can see there's various continuums available to you. What we're talking about is looking at incorporating your portfolio and, and uh, there are there are going to be some things about incorporation we're going to talk about. We are going to be looking at incorporation relief, but it's not simply saying, well, incorporation relief uh, exists and we can use it. Uh, it exists, but it can be used in heavily restricted forms, which is why I have brought in the idea of risk, the idea of the portfolio, the idea of management, the idea of ownership, because these are all elements that make the legislation easier or harder to get through. Uh, but yeah, if anyone tells you like there's no risk regardless, yeah, that in my opinion, uh, they should be looked at with some skepticism. Uh, and you know, one of the key things we're going to be looking for is is the this is a, a this is one of our awards that we won. You know, she's not a partner; <laughs> it's just one of the awards, and she she gave me the award. Um, I think it's Sally Toxvig. If you don't, she's a comedian, really, really nice, uh, very, very funny lady. And uh, 
what the partnership is is about uh, you know it's it's you know who do you own the partnership with is it with you know it, it doesn't matter who really but it's got to be a proper partnership you know you've got to be sharing uh, income and and sharing losses and preferably there should be a some sort of a document that demonstrates as a partnership if there isn't then uh, then it's not the end of the world but you know if there was it would make your case even stronger okay but evidenced by tax returns you know if you've got a partnership but it isn't evidenced by tax returns then one has to call into question whether there is really a partnership and how good or bad that partnership uh, might be seen as in the in the light of the inland revenue and how much risk that then puts on to the planning uh, sometimes, if you haven't got a partnership, we may need to, uh, and even if you have, sometimes it may, we may need to look at how long you've had the partnership. It, you know, if it's been going for under three years, the risk is very high or much higher. If it's been going for over three years, the risk comes down. Again, depending on the portfolio size and the management, da da da. Right? I, I, you know, there's a whole continuum, right? So, but you know, if you've only been a partner for like a partnership for uh, six months, then you know. Bear in mind, if you get into this planning, then you're looking at maybe three years. So it, it can be a slow burn process. It could be quick if you've already if you qualify, but if you don't qualify, it could be a slow process. And you have to. It's a waiting game. It's a long term plan. But then property is a long term game, isn't it? So that probably doesn't surprise you and it doesn't upset you. But bear in mind that um, Mr. Snail here. Uh, may take a while to get uh, cooked. Uh, and, <laughs> cooked. That's a bad. That's a bad analogy. May take time to come to fruition. Okay. Uh, so, what are the costs of of this uh, planning? We use uh, very heavy duty tax planners because you can get people to muck about with this stuff, and it is so dramatic when it goes wrong that to me that is a false economy it's like going well you know i've got a i've got an apprentice a doctor or surgeon uh and uh, i need brain surgery so yeah, yeah i'll take on the apprentice two weeks training yeah have a go let's see what happens <laughs> far too dangerous <laughs> terrible analogy isn't it but you know, you get your gun someone i'm saying you in my opinion that's the only way we work we wouldn't do it any, any other way you need the best advice you can get because uh, you know, if you do, if you have a portfolio of under two million, this is probably not right for you. But if you, if you got a portfolio of two million and, and it's got a significant capital gains, you could save two hundred thousand pounds. Now, would you want that type of advice that could save you, you know, a hundred thousand pounds, or two hundred thousand pounds, or sixty thousand pounds? Would you expect that advice that advice for three hundred pounds? Would you expect that advice for two hundred but two thousand pounds? You know, well, unfortunately, uh, it ain't happening, all right? Because the guys we use, and, and sorry, it's not happening with us. You may get it in the marketplace, and like you, you know, there are many accountants who do do stuff really cheap. Um, one has to wonder how much time they've got to do the research that they need to do to keep up to date with their skills and the legislation and everything else. So we're not going to touch that area, okay? So if I tell you that the cost for dealing with your portfolio is going to be around fifteen to thirty thousand pounds, depending on its complexity, okay. So if you're not prepared to pay between fifteen and thirty thousand pounds for the planning uh, to make this happen, if it's possible to happen, then uh, now's the time to turn off because now you know whether you qualify or not uh, you're probably you're probably still here because you qualify on the number of properties the management of the properties the ownership of the properties and so on uh, you know, now if you're not willing to pay 15 to 20 000, if you were thinking it's going to cost you know 1200 or uh, or 3000 pounds now you know it isn't with us you, you may want to go some, somewhere else who and you maybe want to do a price shop on this type of thing uh, it's not what we would recommend but you know your, it's your it's your decision your prerogative your portfolio your tax bill your risk so 50 to 20 thousand pounds uh, to save the first lump of tax which is uh, we're going to come to in a second and of course there'll be costs for us to work with you and the uh, specialist to make sure this gets you know we, we get it moving they're going to need information from us and we have this knack of explaining things really nice and clearly and in layman's english and 
and really making sure that you want to minimize your risk. If you don't understand risk, please don't get into this, okay? Uh, because there is always risk. I keep saying it and I'll keep saying it till, till we, we either do business or don't. My job here on this video is to dissuade you from doing planning because if you haven't got the guts for it, uh, I don't mean guts, courage. I mean the guts that, you know, if you start getting, if it starts going wrong or you start getting questions on the revenue, it causes you sleepless nights and rows with your family, then this is not for you. Pay your tax and sleep at night. This is for you if you, you don't, you understand there is a risk to it, there's a huge saving to it, and it's a business proposition, okay? So you're going to save 200,000 pounds, you may pay 25,000 pounds. That to me is a business proposition. It's not a, you know, it's not a, you know, I'll go to a shop, I'll buy, you know, I'll pay 50 quid and I'll get my 50 quids worth of goods. It's, this is completely different. Okay, please. Um, so what are the benefits? You know, we, we've talked about some pretty big car, big charges by the professionals what are the benefits and if the, uh, the benefits are several fold first thing is income tax you know with income tax rules are changing on rental properties if you own these in your own name somebody's going to get charged income tax on these properties and that income tax is now going to go up not only are we going to expect the higher rates to go up but the, the what's allowable as deductions on property has been restricted and it's going to get tighter and tighter and in my opinion i can see them targeting landlords now into the future. I can see each budget, as the country needs more money, will just go, well, we'll just put another percentage here, another percentage here, another percentage. And the tax on landlords uh, with portfolios will rise. By the way, none of what I'm saying here affects commercial property as much, okay? This is mainly residential. If you own a portfolio of commercial properties, talk to us separately. So income tax is the first thing you can save. And that will usually pay for itself in the fees you're looking at. You know, we talked about so fifteen to thirty thousand pounds. In in the fees you're talking to, uh, talking about, they'll, it'll probably save itself in the first two or three years. Now that's not you know, if you could invest in something uh, significant and it would pay its pay its way over three years and then start making money, that is a reasonably good investment in my opinion. But it's a business decision. Remember, it is a business decision. There is risk attached to this. You, you know, the bank has little risk, hardly any risk. And if you put money in your bank, you get 1%, half a percent, 2%, 3%, 4%. 4%. did not get 30%, 40%, 100%, 300%. Uh, this is a 30, 40, 50, 100% investment, not a 1, 2, 3%. So taken, you don't get returns of this magnitude without taking risk. Please hear me, okay? This is important. Uh, you're going to potentially save on capital gains tax. Now, you, you remember I said your portfolio, you bought it for a, a million, a, a group of properties over time, it cost you a million pounds, it's now worth two million pounds. Not unusual, three million pounds, four million pounds. Um, now, that capital gain, normally when you sell it, you would get a capital gain between what you sell it for and what you bought it for. Now, this planning has the potential to rebase your costs. So your property price now is the price it, it is today, on the, if you do the planning today, or in three years' time, if, we, you know, if you took that time lag we talked about, uh, the price in three years' time. So you, the capital gains tax disappears. Okay. Now, of course, you know that between now and three years' time, the tax legislation may change uh, on this strategy. So please bear that in mind. But you know you, that, what that will happen is the property. If you bought it, just take into account. Take this. You bought it for half a million. It's now worth one million. You you put it into the into the uh, limited company using incorporation relief, given the size of your portfolio, the ownership, the management, and everything else. Everything qualifies. Minimize your risk there. Uh, when you move it into the limited company under incorporation relief, the value of the property now is rebased to a million pounds. So when you sell it, just say you sell it uh, five years later for 1.2 million, you'll only pay tax on 0.2 of a million, 200,000 pounds. Whereas if you sell it now in that, in that time frame, you will pay tax between 500,000 and 1.2 million. 700,000 pounds is what you pay capital gains tax on. So you can see in capital gains tax on residential property is still 28% at that level. You know, uh, so it, it's, you know, you 30% of 700,000 pounds is what you, off 500,000 pounds is what you're saving. 
Thirty percent of five hundred thousand pounds is over a hundred thousand pounds. Can you begin to see why the magnitude of cost to benefits is demonstrates there is some risk attached, right? Uh, but there's some significant benefits uh, when it all goes right, and we all wish it goes right. I'm I'm wishing it goes right because I'm doing this myself, uh, and I'm sure my clients who are doing this is also looking for it to go right. But we can guarantee nothing. The revenue is completely and. Uh, a wild cannon at the moment. Uh, you know, it's like uh, like taming a wild horse. They, they've been given the lead, and no one's stopping them, right? They're just being allowed to run anywhere they like, and no one has got the guts to stop them. We've, as a group, we've tried, as chartered accountants, we've tried, as tax professionals, we have tried. We've got together with a whole lot of my colleagues. We've we've put uh, petitions into the government. It's, it's not happened, okay? Inheritance tax. Now, the next stage of the plan, the first stage I said to you was between 50 and 30,000 pounds. The next stage of the planning is if you want to put that into trust so that, you know, when you pass away, you can pass it on to your, your family uh, for uh, no inheritance tax or very little inheritance tax. So in the meanwhile, you're alive, you still control the asset and the income. And when you pass away, those assets can then be passed on to your next generation without a huge inheritance tax. Can you imagine what 40% uh, tax would be on a, port- on a portfolio gain of, you know, 3 million? That would be uh, significant, wouldn't it, in 20 years' time or 10 years' time or whenever, uh, you know, the, 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 the unfortunate time happens. But you've got to be that, bear that in mind, okay? Uh, what are our fees in all of this? Well, we have several tiers of fees. The first fees is just to do the, the, which is why I'm doing this completely free, is because I want to get you the briefing completely free. Uh, however, the, when we meet to discuss this and take your portfolio apart and start scheduling it down and looking at the management and the values and the partnerships and the ownerships and, and everything else, uh, that, that's going to take some time. And our fees uh, will be for the first stage 1500 pounds to do that fact find to do the analysis to work out if you can do it now you will already know whether you think there's a good chance or not now if we can have a 30 minute or or one hour discussion our fees are 350 pounds uh but if it if we can't knock it out when i say the discussion if it aborts if we get down the line and we go no it doesn't fit and we spent an hour then you'll pay for you know pay the 350 or 500 pounds for that time we spent however if we find that it's okay and it's looking good then you pay for that that process of checking it out and making sure it's okay of 1500 pounds plus vat okay so that's the first thing is uh, our fees and the second thing is when we start going through the process i we act as liaison between the tax professional and yourself you know he will ask us for information he will ask us to make sure we get certain things uh, that has a fee implication usually that's about three thousand uh, pounds for the whole process depending on how long it takes if it's a three-year process maybe a bit more uh, if it happens straight away it may be a lot less uh, but bear that in mind our fees 1500 for part one to make sure the feasibility is done whether there's a, a business there whether there's management whether there's a, a relevant size portfolio and ownership and everything else and then there is the next part which is holding um, the, the fort between the two parties yourself on one hand the partners and the the tax plan on the other to make sure you guys talk and get the the thing done properly so what are your next steps if your, your next step is to watch this video again now you've 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 sort of gone through the shock of having the fee you've gone through me trying to put you off and saying there's huge risk and you've got to factor in risk and i i recommend you don't do it if you've got any thoughts about uh, worrying about it and stuff and i'd rather you just pay for the tax pay for everything else or oh, by the way you know one of the other taxes we we got to look at is stamp duty land tax to minimize that we you know it's part of our process if you're not a partnership if you're not a business if you're not if you don't own enough uh, properties you may end up with a stamp duty land tax charge and that could be anything from one to three percent uh you will also have um, legal fees you will have to get a lawyer to do some conveyancing if you're moving across you you will have to refinance your properties uh almost certainly 
as a portfolio. You'll go to the bank and go, I've now got a limited company. I've got, you know, it's 10 properties. I've got 26 properties. I've got, in my case, you know, over 40. Um, you know, I need to refinance this. And you know, this is now becoming far more commonplace than it's been for many, many years. Uh, one, the banks prefer to lend to limited companies now. It, it makes their decisions much easier as long as there's reasonable uh, fat in it. You know, in between um, value and mortgage, uh, you know, you'll get a you'll get a reasonably good deal. It may not be as good as some of the mortgages you've got, but it will be a good deal. But you look at the cost. You know, usually, the tax saved will save you. It you know, will be worth it to pay the extra interest charges. Okay, uh, there's no point looking at just interest charges. Look at tax saved against interest. If you t- if your tax saves. Um, Ten thousand pounds a year, and your interest, extra interest charges, is six thousand pounds a year. You know, not a problem, right? But if your interest charges are twelve thousand pounds, but your tax income tax saved is only ten thousand pounds, you may want to make sure you've got enough capital gains tax savings to make you feel okay. All right. So uh, your next, so your next steps. Watch the video again. Bear in mind the cost. Bear in mind the risk. Uh, and decide. Sit down with whoever that is in char- working with the property. Let them watch this video and decide whether this is the type of planning you, as a family, as a group, as a partnership, as a whatever, needs to do, wants to do, have to, has a stomach to do, because that will that will make it your your life a lot easier. Because you can then call it quits right now. You've spent nothing with me. You've spent nothing with a tax professional. You've just gone look. Gordon's probably right. The risk is probably not worth it. Let's find another way or let's just talk to Gordon about doing it and pay the tax. Doing it with paying the tax is the easy part. There's no risk in that at all because you're paying all the tax. But, you know, way, uh, no problem. Or be prepared to pay the tax, put the tax money aside or something. That, that's the much better way to go. So decide if that's the right thing or just dump the idea. And we'll keep sending you emails until you tell us we're dumping the idea, all right? You've said you're interested in this. We'll keep sending you regular emails every week or two. And we'll just say, have you made a decision yet? Just tell us yes or no. If you tell us no, we'll stop sending you emails. I'm not interested in bombarding emails to people that don't want them. We're adding value, right? And so tell us if you want want it. If you want it, fantastic. If you don't, fantastic. You've made the right choice either way. It's right because you've watched this video, you've taken it seriously, and you've decided what you want to do as an owner, uh, as a group of owners, as a partnership of owners, as a husband and wife, as a sole owner, and we will look at making it happen uh, with a fee arrangement, okay? We don't do this stuff free anymore. Um, so thank you very much for listening. My name's Gordon De Silva. As I said, we're, we're a multi-award winning firm of chartered accountants. We're good at what we do because we're passionate about what we do. I love property. I own lots of property. And so I understand property. Um, and so I've put my contact details on here. I've even given you my mobile number because sometimes you may want to have a five minute chat. And I mean, you know, it's a five minute chat. I, I, I'm not having free consultations for, you know, 30 minutes and one hour, three hours. Uh, we, we do a, a, a project on it. We get, a, we uh, do our time on it. I charge 350 pounds an hour minimum. Uh, however, you know, it's like a 1500 pounds for a project. You know, we can reduce it to 350 or 500. If we find we do some fact and we don't, it's not going to go forward. I'll reduce that 1500 to you know, between 350 and 500. Uh, if we can get it sorted within the one hour, if we don't, and we go ahead and move forward and having done the fact find and presented it and it's a goer and we take it to the tax professionals and saying we want to do this and get their opinion then it's a 1500 pound fee uh so but you can call me we're gonna have a very quick chat and decide whether you want to set a meeting with me to then discuss it we'll have details of all your portfolios one of my teams will start collating the information and putting it together for me so we can clearly see who owns it what happens to it where the rent is what the interest is where the mortgages are you know all of that stuff we do a fact find on that which is part of that 1500 pounds uh, assessment okay so um, that's it uh, it's me gordon de silva wishing you all the best hopefully you have enough information now to decide um, if you've got a few questions, by all means, send me an email and, and I'll do another video addendum to this with frequently asked questions. But I think I've covered most of the area. Remember, we're saving in income tax. We're saving um, 
stamp duty, we're saving stamp duty with a, with a fair chance if it fits the bill. We're saving capital gains tax. We have the potential in the next stage to save inheritance tax. That's another lumpy fee that's about 30, 40,000 um, pounds, maybe even 50,000 pounds, depending on the size of the portfolio. It can be worthwhile if you got over two million pounds, right, of inheritance tax. Because if you got two million pounds, inheritance tax is going to be forty percent. Uh, you may want to leave it for a while. You never know when accidents can happen, but you may want to leave it a while. But you know, if you could save twenty-eight uh, percent of two million pounds, and it's going to cost you thirty, forty, fifty thousand pounds to do that, you may want to do it. You may not. You, know, that's, you may say, "Well, when I die, I don't care what happens. Let them sell it and pay the tax. I don't care." But no, some people feel differently. So, uh, so that we've talked about that. We've talked about the costs. We've talked about the professional costs. We've talked about our costs. We talked about st uh, potential stamp duty land tax. We talked about we talked about risk and it failing. We've talked about legal costs. We've talked about uh, conveyancing costs and refinancing costs. So I think I've briefed you on everything that's relevant. You may want to watch this twice, three times, four times. You know, if you we are talking about a business decision here, a business decision that could save you half a million pounds over time. It may even save you two million pounds. I did one a few months ago uh, that uh, if it all goes well, and you know, like I said, we don't guarantee anything, if it all goes well, could save three and a half million pounds just in capital gains tax and income tax over the next five years. Now, that makes it a no-brainer to try uh, for a business decision if you've got the stomach to make that type of business decision. If you haven't, then it's a terrible decision to go ahead and you don't want to do that, okay? So hopefully I've, I've given you the essence, I've given you my most honest appraisal of it uh, because I want you to really take it seriously. And I'd rather you didn't do it because you didn't want the risk rather than did it and and you know, hoping that wouldn't nothing bad would happen because you've got to expect something bad to happen because then when it doesn't, you're going to be home free. Okay, uh, but if you expect nothing bad to happen, you you're just going, oh no no, it's going to be fine because Gordon says go. you know, I'm not saying it's going to be fine. I'm saying get yourself prepared for a fight if necessary. We hope it doesn't happen, but we've got to be prepared for a fight. We'll look to reduce the risk for you and explain that to you, but you've got to be prepared for a fight. So. Uh, that's me, Gordon De Silva, wishing you uh, happy decision making. I know I hear from you if you would like to make that appointment and get into a fee project uh, mode with with me on this subject. If you don't, I understand completely. There are many, many people in this market. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. You have to make a decision who you feel comfortable with to take something as big as this forward. Until we speak on this subject or another subject, I wish you all the very best. Goodbye.